That was Ed Sheeran and Beyonce with Perfect. Oh my goodness, we had a little bit of drama in the studio. Um, <laughs> but it's all good now. It's all good. It's all good. This is Tools on the Midday Show. I have my special guest in the studio with me. Um, Laolu, what, NYC, New York City? Laolu, how do I introduce you? Yeah, Laolu, NYC, also known as Laolu, Sheba and John. The artist. Visual artist. Yes, 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 the artist. Um, okay, so if you have been, if you pay attention to, um, you know, what's happening in the, you know, world music internationally and, of course, in Nigeria, you'll see that um, there's been, how, how do I even get into this? Okay, so I follow um, Elisha Key, Swiss Beats, on Instagram, and I've seen a lot of African-inspired art, artwork on their faces, on their arms, and, um, of course, in Beyonce's video, um, lemonade. We saw the some of the dancers. They had some gorgeous, like you know, body paint and everything. And you, sir, were behind all of this. Yes. Yes. I yes. Was. <laughs> okay. So before before we get started, before we talk right. about that, we'll right. talk about the major names that you worked um, with in you know in the world. Right. Um, let's talk about you. So I I didn't know this till well a few weeks ago. I didn't know that you actually you started off as a lawyer. Yes. Okay, a human rights lawyer? Yeah. Okay, so tell us about that. Why did you get into, you know, human rights law and how did you decide that, okay, I don't want to do that anymore, I want to be an artist now? First, my parents are Nigerian, <laughs> they're Yoruba, and my dad's also an attorney. Um, for me, growing up was, uh, was pretty much all set up, laid out, like, um, you were just going to be a lawyer, whether you liked it or not. And um, I always wanted to do art, never stopped doing art really, even after law school. So um, when I finished law, I, mean, I didn't want to go to law school at first. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to focus on art and do music, you know, and I'm going to make a lot of money, you know. And it, they just, you know, I remember talking to my dad, he was like, you're just a dreamer, like, you think this actually would work, you know. And so it's so not they basically yet. told you that could it work? Yeah, could it work, yeah, okay. could it work. So, um, I mean, now everything is different though. But, you know, back then it was not, like struggling with my 9 to 5 and also doing art on the side was just so, so hard. Mm. So, I mean, when I decided to quit, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do art full time. You know, everybody's just coming like, oh, what's he going to do now? Like, you How are you going to make a living? Yeah, how are you going to make a living? Mm. So it's more like, you know, you know, get a real job and everything. So, I mean, when I decided to move to Brooklyn, it was out of like, I just wanted to like have a different space where I could actually work, you know, without any judgment, without anybody like, you know, looking over my shoulder, what are you doing now, are you, you know, successful. And then, because this is like, we're kind of built towards success. But the thing is, there's, there are many ways in which, you know, you can actually be successful. It couldn't, it doesn't have to be just, you know, one, you know, do this and do this and do that for you successful. And for me, I always understood that, you know, every human, everybody has like a strong point. There's something you're good at, you can ace and become like supreme at it. And I only understood that, yeah, I had a gift, but how I was going to turn that to money, I really didn't have a full grasp, but I just wanted to just sit back and understand what this art world was about. So that's, when I moved to New York, I had a lot of art. When was this? What? When did you move to New York? 2013. 2013. Also, oh, it's it's been pretty recent. Yeah, recent. Yeah, it's been yeah. pretty recent. Yeah. Okay, all right. So you moved to New York. You decided yeah. to quit law. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, were you so were you making were you making as lawyer? Were you getting you know the dollars, the money? No, I was in I was in practicing like. Oh, you didn't in, practice in, in, in New York. I, okay. I, I was okay. doing art, and I was just like just lost, pretty much, and. Um, like, I just go from gallery to gallery with my art, like, hoping they would give me a chance to, to do something. And they were like, uh, this art does not fit into our clientele. Oh, we don't, do you have an it's agent? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too, it's too, you know. And, I mean, it was really hard because it was tough because I had all these dreams in my pocket. And I was thinking, we're just stepping in the U.S. Like, boom, it's just going to blow. And that didn't happen. So I had to... I mean, you know, we're in 2018 <laughs> now, so it's just been a few years. Yeah, so you've actually well, done. You've actually done well, pretty well. It's you know, to be honest, you know, one, one day in New York is like a month sometimes yeah. when you think about what happens. Mm. Honestly, because I cannot quantify the, the 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 amount of like things I've, that I have done. Like sometimes in six months, it's like I haven't done some of those things in years. Mm, mm. You know, and. Um, New York is very, is very. I mean, to be unfair to compare any other place to New York in the world, because mm. a lot, everything happens so fast and so quick that you could have so much today, and then the next year you jack, boom, mm, you know. So true. you really have to have a lot with you, like 
you have to like keep on constantly creating or you have to like have a lot of like a, like a depth of a lot of art whatever it is you do you must have to just keep doing it you must be on your toes mm -hmm. so i mean new york kind of just made me understand that the possibilities are endless yeah i yeah. mean just something as mundane as easy as art stores i used to get lost in art stores because i saw a lot of art things that i never even knew existed like mm. oh i can use that and i would just buy just like a kid in the candy store just go to art stores and buy things and that's why as much as i bought a lot of like a couple of things you know for other people who want to mm. Like from my friends who are also artists, and I only, I'm sharing out to people who I know who need it. Like an artist is as good as the tools you give them. There are a lot of people here who are really good at what they do, but the thing is they don't have the opportunity that, yeah. I've, that I've had. So I wouldn't say like, oh, you know, I have done so, but the thing is I've just been, I'm grateful I've had the opportunity to be able to, you know, show my skill and bring my art to like the world stage and people yeah. actually acknowledge it. I, th yeah. I think you're able to key into the lucrative, you know, part of things because um, with any sort of creative art, yeah. um, it's it's obviously fantastic if you're talented, but you need to have the business acumen as well yes. um, to be able to, you know, monetize. Yes, yes, yeah. and make and make a decent living. Yeah. So when did things when did things start to change? When what was that um, opportunity that came about that just changed things for you? You know. I think one of the very first things that happened was um, just being able to um, 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 survive. Survival was one of the key um, things. The big opportunity came, of course, like, you know, I worked with Nike. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. that's a pretty, pretty yeah. big deal. Yeah, I worked with Nike. So when they called you, wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> so when they called you, did you think, oh, okay, one of my friends is having a laugh, who's this? Who's yeah, this? actually, yeah. actually, I thought I thought as much. But you know what's funny is that even before Nike happened, I had worked with Beyonce. Yeah. But I couldn't talk about it. I waited like eight months before I could talk about Beyonce. Wow. Did you get to meet her? Yeah, I did. Oh yes. my God, what's she like? <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole crazy story. So, I, so wait, I, wait, I okay. That. Before we talk to, before we talk to, <laughs> yeah. talk about the Nike um, part, let's talk about. So, would you say working with Beyonce was like the first like major opportunity you had? Yeah, to be honest, yeah, so that, was like that, a, that, that was that was that was. I'm a Beyonce stan. Yeah, we all are Beyonce. <laughs> so you got a call, or, yeah. you, or you got a, me yeah, a I, message? Yeah, I, I, I got a call. They got an email. Okay. Them. And of course, in, in the email, um, I I just pretty much thought, oh, maybe someone's trying to scam me. Or I was just waiting for the catch. Like, okay, and they're going to tell me now that, oh. What did the email say? To, what? what it just said, um, we love what you do. I'm a big fan of yours, blah, blah, blah. I would love you to work on some, like a project with me, blah, blah. And it was Beyonce. I was like. <laughs> like, yeah, like, right. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> really? And I was like, okay, what's the project about? Replied and everything. And then I got a meal from the official Parkwood and like said that everything. And I'm like, but I have to sign a non disclosure first before I could have a meeting. Because I want to have a, like a face-to-face -face meeting. Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah, but I have to sign non-disclosure. So there's a lot of like documentation yeah, so I have to sign. Of but when I was reading it through, that's when something said to me like, oh shit, this is real. You know? Because I saw a lot of things, a lot of things that I knew that oh, this was real. Yeah. And then when I signed it, all my tickets were booked, business, everything, and I went. And you were off to see Beyonce. Off, off to Louisiana, off to off to New Orleans, because that's where she was at. Mm. So. I mean, when I got down from the plane and you know just taking my my baggage and everything for my claim and I saw this guy holding my name up, you know, the chauffeur and the car, and I was like, wow, this is real. This you is know, serious. This is serious. It's it's serious, real. you know, it's serious. And it's just you know, a lot of times you know you see back when you tell people that you know it sounds cliche when you say you know just don't give up on yourself. Yeah, or, yeah. Just keep at it. Something might happen. You know, it sounds cliche, but for me it's real because I felt like like you know when you're like I was in that backseat, those memories just. That's, that was a moment for me that I could never forget. Before I ever met her, you know, mm. that was like, you know, you the could feel up. something. Yeah. Like, yes, this is real, and this is gonna change a lot of things about my my career as an artist. So, got the hotel, sat in the middle of people just in the lobby alone. I made I started meeting celebrities. This is me, Big I met Amanda. I met a lot of people. I met, mm. and it was just insane. And then I was called up for a meeting, and she was there. It's like, you know, Laulu, hi. How are you? It's a pleasure to meet you. And then she started. Did she pronounced you. your name right. She did. Really? That's good. Yes. Cute. It was. It was. We spoke for about thirty minutes, mm. and she, she, she was telling me about my art. Tell, nobody has ever. Nobody goes to my YouTube page. Mm. She told me about the art she saw on my YouTube page. All the time. So they researched you. Yep. Told me about things that I posted on my Instagram like two weeks before. 
She said she loves my jackets and she loves my shoes. I was just like this. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so really, you don't know who's yeah. following you. Yeah, and, and, and she, she, you don't know. And, and that just blew me away because she did a lot of research and she started talking about Yoruba myth and Yoruba. And I was just like, wow. You know, and that just made me know that she actually, you know, I kind of reminded her of something. She wanted something and she saw who was doing it. And I was just like, you know, being in the right mm. place at the right time and boom. It's there happened. you go. Yep. There you go. Yep. So that that's that is a very very important yeah. you know story and yeah. a fantastic reference to have. Um, so let's talk a bit more about you because uh, just before we came on air, you were telling you telling me and um, RGM about your your art. Yes. So the um, the inspiration, the yeah. idea behind your art. Yeah. Um, so obviously you would you cons would you consider your work paintings or? Would you, or how would you describe them? I call it, I call it, it's a visual, I'm a visual artist and mm. it's um, a visual impressions in it. I call the name of what I do on the skin and the human body, human body is my canvas. I use the term motto, everything is my canvas, but this that I put on my skin is called the sacred art of the Ori, it's the name I coined. Mm. It's something that actually that evolved, you know, because pretty much what I do is I take my art from, from uh, the canvas, from using charcoal on board, using acrylic and everywhere, ink on canvas, anywhere. everywhere, and then I put it from that and take the whole the same concepts and put it on the human skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what I call my style also is called Afro mysterics, which means the mystery of the African thought pattern. So you have concepts, you have ideas, and you have lines, and they're all woven together in patterns to tell the story. So you mm -hmm. have different storylines mm -hmm. in the same piece. So when you look at my face, for example, you, you, you just think, people look at it like, oh, that's beautiful, does he have a meaning? I'm like, yes, he has a meaning, and what's the meaning? This so so everything you do has yeah, a story. Has, everything has a story, has a story. Okay. everything has a story. Like this is drawn from, you know, Yoruba mythology. When you look closely, you see the axe, and you can see it's Shango. Like when I woke up this morning, I just felt like, how do I want to represent myself? How do I want to feel? I want to become, I want to be beautiful. Um, your, um, Shango is a god of beauty and music, and also it's a god of war. God, mm. man, war, warrior, at once. And he has this axe. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to blaze through today. Yeah. So I put that there. That's a reminder. So, so you so. wake up in the morning and you're like, hmm. hmm yeah. I feel like the spirit of Shango is with me today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you just. And I go in the vibe. You know, okay, a lot of times I good. go in the vibe. And the same thing, if I was going to paint on you, like, I'm, I'm getting the vibe off you now. Really? Yeah. What kind of vibe are you getting? Yeah, I'm getting the same vibe, like Osho, the same one that I was portrayed in Beyonce's video of the yellow. Okay. Yeah. And it's a lot right. of that vibe. And it's just beauty, sensual. Somebody who's like aware of this, or they, they are aware of their sensuality. They almost can't get anything just by looking at people. <laughs> you know what? You need to actually tell me how I can do that because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit lost. All right. Yeah. So we were talking about um, your about mythology as yeah, well, yeah. and that's something that I think is just incredible yeah. um, because if you think about it in entertainment, um, in in at the box office, mm -hmm. you know your Thor, your mm -hmm. you know they're yeah. doing big yeah. big numbers. Yeah. So um, why do you think that your about mythology hasn't really crossed over? Because we have some interesting stories. I think the Nigerian culture is so incredibly rich and diverse yes. and so interesting and endless yes. as well yes. so why yes. do you think it hasn't crossed over honestly it's same question because we have so much to pick from I, I, I can I can exhaust on this show I it's so much I mean just for example I'm just touching this the slave trade happened it was horrible what happened with slave trade Yoruba mythology culture it traveled when where went to Brazil it went to America it went mm -hmm. to Cuba it went all over the world mm -hmm. so we don't even have to export it's already there and why all these people back in all these countries know what they're trying to do to try to find a link home. Mm, mm, mm. What do we do about that? Where's their link? West Africa? Where in West Africa? Yoruba land? Where? Or Shingo? Or Shugo? It's already there. Mm. What do we have to do that? Create a safe space, create an area like a museum where people can go and promote the shit out of it. Sorry for using bad language on radio. Uh, I, I do apologize. <laughs> I do apologize. Yeah, but I see people who don't even have like half of what we have. Centuries old. Like centuries. We have things that... Could go on for like a thousand years. That's why people yeah. say, "Oh, Yoruba, what tribe are you?" I don't. I don't consider myself from a tribe because it's rude, and I think it's insulting to call Yoruba people a tribe. That's a nation. Mm. You know, but it's existed for like thousands of years, and we, we have our own like civilization, methods, our food, our dance, our entertainment, everything. I mean, you can call a tribe of people like the monkeys or five people in the bush. That's a tribe. <laughs> yeah, you can call Yoruba. You can call yourself a tribe. I think it's ridiculous because you don't go to England and say, "What tribe are you?" Mm. We go to Ireland and say, what tribal? You know what it does that. Mm. You know, we, I think we should pride ourselves in who we are, the, the, the heritage we have, the legacy we've been given. You mm. understand? And not just start with the colonial um, t period because this is, it's, it's, it's so hard to tell people it's that. It's obviously, yeah. you know, it's existed way yeah. before that. Way yeah. before. And when you even look at things like the Ife head, let's just take an example of the Ife head. I know the Ife head. Ife head, when it was, of course, when people come here to tell you, they, they, they tell us to discover it, but 
wasn't they didn't discover shit. It's been around. Look, I'm gonna need to stop saying the S word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't discover anything, but I hope they don't kick me out of here. I'm just I hope this. so too. <laughs> <laughs> but the if I had is as old as is seven hundred years old. Do you know what that means? Really old. It was this. It was called the supreme. It was immediately declared as a supreme. It was declared as a supreme document mm. at that point. And at the point when the Ifa head was being made, you know, also nobody was making anything that detailed. Not the Greeks, not the Chinese, not the Asians. Mm. So immediately, our artwork kind of took a place, took its place. When you talk of Greek art, you talk of Yoruba art. Mm. Like it's it's that serious. Like we have a place in history. And people don't understand how heavy that is because not every culture or every civilization has this kind of um, history. Because that is huge. That means we come from an ancestry of geniuses, mm. you know. And this is this is where I'm coming from. When people look at my work, it's so, so detailed, so complex. Yeah, it's so complex because it's in my DNA. You know, this is who we are. We are made this way. I'm not trying to brag, but we just need to embrace who we are mm. and understand that we need like I need we need to like build museums back home. And we need to tell all these people who are stolen our artworks to return them. That was actually going to be my yeah. next question because I was it was it a few years ago that the um, the Ifair head was yeah. which which museum was this in the which British country? British Museum. Um, and then mm. there was there was there was a bit of an uproar, not a yeah. major uproar to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And um, it got me thinking, you know, they, they this is this is in a museum, not in our country. People yeah. are like, oh wow, this is amazing. They're yeah. obviously making money from it, yeah. and it's not really yeah. you know coming back here. Yeah. So how do you think artists here? Um, there, there. Are, I'm like I said before, I'm not terribly you know um, yeah, knowledgeable Probably. about the art world yeah. I just know what I like yeah you know and I followed you and I was like oh I love what he does it's amazing very interesting Thank you tools. Really and appreciate that. you're very welcome <laughs> and I love the fact that there's a story behind it yeah. and you can look at you what you do and you can kind of just say oh I think this means this or this means that so that we're talking about a Wally Shurinka piece and you did that yeah. I thought it was absolutely yeah. fantastic yeah. and you could see that you tried to capture different elements from what you know about him. Yeah. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Um, so how do we get more artists? Because we do have a lot of very, very, very talented artists yeah. here in Nigeria. Yeah. So how do we get to a place where their work stands, you know, can stand up in the, on a global level, basically? Yeah. So it can be, you know, competitive on a global level. Um, in, in Jidika Akinuli Crosby, she's um, obviously very, her. very successful. Her, her, her work is selling, like, yeah. you know. So how do we get to the, to, to the stage where, you know, uh, we have more Nigerian artists, like, yeah. yeah, doing well globally? So I think the first time is the mindset, you know. And, you know, with everything you said, you talked about, you know, um, um, some of our artworks in, in British museums and all the museums in, you know, in France and different parts of the world. I think one of the problems we're having, we're having a, like a different type of colonization happening right now in our midst, but we don't even know it because we, a lot of people don't even talk about it because they don't know. Mm. Like, for example, look at this. This is a very famous British artist called Damien Hurst. Yes, You know yes, what he did? He recreated the Ifa head. He recreated the head and he, used it, he put it in an exhibition. One, he has access yes, to I the remember, British. I remember yeah, that. He had access that. to the British Museum mm -hmm. and they gave him access to actually do that. As an African, I wouldn't even be given that kind of access to do that, because they would tell me that like, it's a ripoff and a copy. But he can do that mm. and get up. And guess who's going to see that? You know who's coming to this exhibition? Kids. Yeah, and they're I going the to. First time, and they're they going to see, see the if ahead, and they're going to be like, "Oh, that's David that's Hurst." <laughs> and guess what? My own like descendants, so people after us are going to come and going to come with art like that and go to Europe. Like, oh, your work reminds me of Damien Hurst. <laughs> do, do you know how insulting that is? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And the thing is, and this is happening right now, and our stuff is being stolen daily. I see a lot of art every time, and I see, including Picasso stole art from Africa. Mm. I love him, I respect him, but a lot of his. Um, the most uh, the recent works he did before before he passed a lot of them were inspired by masks in Africa and he didn't even say so. Mm. So well, that's exactly what yeah. Damien Hurst was accused yeah, exactly, of doing. Um, exactly. So, yeah, he was accused of stealing African stealing art without African giving art. credit, without yeah, referencing. without credit. And yeah. they keep doing it. And then my point is, we need to value our own art, and we need to know that when things are being dropped, pe people take it off. We should stand up and be mad about it. Is this something that our government needs to get more involved in? Yes, I think so. I think we need to look more into tourism as like, like a really, really like um, um, as, as 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 a resource, something that we can benefit from because there's so much here. There's so much. I mean, if you go to, I don't want to mention Nikkei Gallery, but 
She's got so much. Like, why should just Nikkei be doing that? Like, we should have, what, we should her, have a her, gal her gallery is amazing. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Yes. Yeah. And I love her as a person. She's like my second be. one. Do this because on a, on a greater level, um, let me start. Let us start seeing this adverts on, on, in CNN, CNN, everywhere, Al Jazeera, worldwide, so people know what is in Africa. We don't want everything about Africa to just be oh, bad governance or scam or any scam, yeah, everything yeah, coming out yeah. of there. So I'm just kind of excited for the future because the revolution has kind of started and I see young minds, everybody now wants to purchase our tools, also is buying my art in case you don't know. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> you do lay away with that, right? <laughs> I, yeah. can, I can put that in deposit and then, you know, every month, God willing. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it's, it's amazing. There's, there's a new wave and I'm, I'm here, I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm inspiring people, younger people now, like I get emails every day like, oh, because of you, I didn't give up or because of you, I'm taking yeah, my art more yeah. seriously. That almost wants to make me grab because that's the reason. It's not just for the fame or for anything. It, it's it's more about inspiring people mm -hmm. and a legacy. You know, yeah, eventually course, people see course. the art. They're like, ah, you're about art. Is uh, art is getting a global acclaim, and it's it's just amazing. Yeah. To be doing that. And you've been you've been featured. Um, you know, your story, your work. You've been featured on quite a lot of sites. Uh, the Fader, Cosmopolitan, yeah. just yeah. name a few. Yeah. Um, and like you said, obviously working with Beyonce. Yeah. Um, working with Nike, which is incredible. Yeah. Uh, Bulgari as well. They did. Yes. You, you had your I'm, own I'm a Bulgari. Yeah. Yeah. That Very must have been incredible. I saw that and I was just like, wait, 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 did he just design something for them? And I was like, I was, I was just like, whoa. Oh yeah, you ain't seen anything yet. This year is gonna be. Late. So there's more. There's oh, more. Man. Give, I can't, give, I can't give me a little bit of. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Non-disclosure. Yeah, non-disclosure. Non but, but it's an LVMH. But just wait for it. <laughs> please, please, please. You know what? Let me just whatever it is. Let me give you a deposit now. Just hold my own. <laughs> so by the time it comes out, I'll be finished paying for it. Tools, we're cool. Don't worry. Okay. We're cool. We're cool. Don't say this, and I'm like, I'll, you have DM. Check your DM, and you're like, you just ignore it. Um, okay. So yeah, you have, you do have a gallery in New York. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Chelsea. Red, yeah, Red Bull Gallery. Yeah. Chelsea. Sure. So yeah. that that is pretty big. That's yes, pretty cool. It is. It is. It is. Um, I have the opportunity to show my work there, and um. Like I, I'm gonna be there for like a year now. They've been very like it's it's just been amazing. Like I I used to be the guy walking around that place, looking into those windows and so hoping one that day. one day it's gonna happen. And then I get invited in. It's 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 I don't know. Sometimes it's it's just incredible. Honestly, I just feel like I just feel lucky and I feel blessed, you know. Yeah. And I just want to be able to stretch out my arms and help other people, you know, because I mean, a lot of artists go we go through a lot, you know, just to yeah. make sure our work gets out there. It's yeah. like our whole life depends on it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And for people who don't even see before there's a big break, it's kind of it, it hurts. But because then big break is not just about the art at that time; it's about all their lives and how they built up that. Mm -hmm. Because you have to do, use your like ten thousand hours, and sometimes you're so good at it, people look at you like, oh, you must be gifted. I tell it's practice. Mm. You know, you know, and a lot of man hours that goes into it too. So yeah, I'm just grateful to be doing what I'm doing. And hopefully, tools comes to New York and I give a tour. I hey, <laughs> I'm so I am so so down for that. I would love to see your work. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that you use different, you know, um, should I say surfaces as your canvas. Yeah. Um, I've seen that you've done stuff for um, you've done you've done a lot of, a lot of like jackets and everything for like yeah. Alicia Keys, yeah. Swiss Beats, yeah. um, Taraji P Henson, yeah. and who else? Man, I can't even count right now. I do something with Kenneth Cole too. Um, yeah, like Usher. Who else have I worked with? Um, like, and I'm still working with. I work with a lot of people that I can't even talk about. I don't want to talk about someone now, but I just... You can, it's just me and you. Your I mic is off. Your mic is off. No, don't do this to me. <laughs> I'm going to have to cancel me. Like, okay, okay. You know what? You know what? Let me not be a destiny destroyer. I'm gonna, it's okay. You don't have to tell me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm in charge. It's pretty... Like, I love... Like, do you know what it means, like, to adore people and then you become friends? That's just crazy. It's so weird. I must be this so cool. so weird. I'm still praying one day, maybe Beyonce. Beyonce will be like, hey, too. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Beyonce is my friend. Um, anyways, so we do have the we do have the headline news coming up shortly. But yeah. you are not just a um, visual artist. Yeah. You are an audio artist as well. I'm a musician. Yeah. <laughs> a musician. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got your track coming up. Um, yeah. I played this on um, on my show for the first time. Like, oh goodness, a good few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is you featuring Sound Sultan, yeah. Mr. Easy, and mm -hmm. Nana B. Cool. Yes. So what do you, I, I, I think I know the answer, but which do you prefer more, music or, you know, 
being a visual artist? Honestly, both of them. I want to. I want to work on an album. You know, the thing is, I'm I'm doing like a visual with music because a lot of my music actually translates my art. A lot of my art translates my music. I, I play the guitar and I'm also a producer. Okay. And um, I I actually brought my guitar if you wanted me to play. I can say I need you if you want to. Do you know what? We're going to do that. We're going to do that. I was going to try and wrap up things, but you know what? I can never say no to um, somebody serenading me. Love it, love it, love it. So we're going to take the headline news right now with Victor, and then yeah. straight after that, straight after that, um, yes, Lauli will be serenading me. You better make it good, all. This is everybody's listening, all. Don't go and fold my hand. <laughs> all right, Victor, over to you for the headline news. <laughs> So, I'm about to sing now. So, give me something to sing about. Um, Yoruba mythology. Yoruba mythology. I always find it very... <laughs> now, what do you sing about? Tell me about your day. My day. Yeah, I'll sing about it. Oh, we can sing together. Uh, yeah. I can't say so. on air. I love it. <laughs> We're gonna do this on air. <laughs> I like saving the moment, so it's more like... <laughs> oh my god! This is too funny. So then, um, this is Khalid's name. That was Khalid with Saved. This is the Beat 99.9 .9 FM. You're listening to Tools on the Midday Show. I still have Laulu in the studio. Uh, we are going to wrap things up because we've got hang time at 2 o'clock. So, um, Laulu has to go get his guitar. And his guitar is beautiful. It's Thank you really, too. really nice. It's really nice. So, he did promise to serenade me earlier. And I'm like, look, if you're going to do this, you got to do it right. Yeah, you got to do it right. And um, we're going to try and... He wants me to sing, but, you know. Um, why, why did you laugh like that? Why did you laugh like that? I should be offended. I, I saw you play the piano last night. Like, um, I saw you say, <laughs> that's a, yeah. See, the thing about me is... Are you really I'm, talented, though? Yes, I am. Yeah. I am. I am very talented. That was really cool. The I thing about... The playing, I like yes. the so, like, I, I just feel <laughs> that I'm just way ahead of my time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I feel like a lot of people are not ready. They're not ready yet. Yes, and they wouldn't understand it. You know, so that special version of, you know, David O's if mm -hmm. it's you need to understand the depth. Yeah. yeah, I get it. No, I, I understand it, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. There's so much depth. Like you need to listen to the to the way I recreated the lyrics. Anyways, enough of my BS, right? <laughs> so, um, how are we gonna do this? Are you gonna just sing? Gonna flow, just gonna like let it like the rhythm just go with like. So okay. I'm into tools right now. On B99 FM, yeah. Talking to the tools. Can you feel the beat? Can you feel the beat? Tools. She woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. She put on a wig. I put on my wig. And then she smiles at the mirror. I smiled at the mirror. Then I put on my spanks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Prince 
Wahid, honey. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. See, I'm actually just displaying how untalented I am. Please. Let me stop embarrassing my whole family. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Oh, that was so funny. That was so funny. Don't worry, when I come to New York, yeah. we're gonna, you know, out of yes, yes. Definitely. I'll get some voice training. I'll get some voice You're training. You're perfect. You're perfect. You don't need to Stop getting me. <laughs> Do you know, the craziest thing is, in terms of, you know, my creative talents, um, singing is not really up there, uh, neither is rapping. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, no, 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 no. Let's put in really. some bars then. Throw in um, some bars. Are you ready? No! You Come need on, something let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Throw in some bars. Let's no, people are going to stop listening. <laughs> let's throw in some bars. Let's do some bars. Uh, yeah. uh, you need to stop making me do this. Because I don't have a talent. I can't rap no more. Really? You're already doing it, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and they're filming! This is gonna go out, this is gonna go out. We're waiting for tools right now. She's about to drop some bars. Come on, tools, let's do this. Oh yeah. I think it's clear that I can't rap. <laughs> it's something clear that I can't sing. So Lalu, if you're gonna do this on my show, I suggest you be behind the mic and do everything off. <laughs> Stop it, stop it, stop it. All right, so we have got... <laughs> People are going to be thinking that I've been drinking. And, oh, okay. you know, I only had my first drink after midday. Well, um, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> so you have got a song with Sound Sultan, yeah. uh, Mr. Easy, and then it'd be cool. It's called yep. Trouble. So tell us a bit yep. about this song. So, um, it's, it's so, like, Sound Sultan is like... For me, he's one of those people that I really adore. He's like a legend because I've known him since I was a child. So, I mean, just meeting him in New York, we met at Barclays Center, and he was like, Oh, now, 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 I'm a big fan of yours. Because, like, I was like, No, this can't be happening. I was like, I'm a big fan of yours. I was like, Wow. I was like, He was so intrigued to see me. I was like, Let's meet up at the studio. I would love to make something with you. And it was just like that. Just like that. I'm like, To be honest, I also make something for you for one of Nike shoes. And he was like, Cool, let's do it. And then boom, we met and he laid, like, that guy is like a genius. He went in and he just did it straight up. No, no like, writing down lyrics. No writing down. Oh, wow, that's no incredible. No anything. Just one take and boom. That's and incredible. Mr. Easy also was around and everybody would just go to the studio and it was just like, boom. Like, so it was it's just what, like, one take? Yeah, everybody, it was crazy, one take. And it was just been having fun in the studio. So that's why it's just, it's just a vibe of like, let's just give, give them what Nigeria feels like. Mm. So every, in that space, everybody was just looking at us like, wow. Like these guys are killing this this beat, and so it was more like, and the guy who made this beat is even Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> so know? it was a, yeah. a, a global project. Yeah, it was a, you know, but you know, it's just you know, we as Nigerians, we have this vibe. It was just you know, it was so good to actually be vibing it. Also, Nigerians coming to New York to do stuff, and it was one Africa, and it was just beautiful because mm. a lot of people were there, and everybody was like, "Wow, I love Nigeria sound is like global sound now. It's it's everywhere. Mm. Like you go into clubs and you're listening, and everybody's like bopping their heads. People sometimes don't understand the lyrics, but they're singing it. Yeah, yeah. And it's no, just no, it's no, like, you know pride for me because yeah. I'm always like, yeah, I'm Nigerian. That's our song. Nig you know, no, you know, Nigerian, Nigerian yeah. music over the last few years, but particularly in 2017. Yep has definitely gone yeah, global. global. Um, so yeah, we look forward to, to hearing more from our artists that are going global. And of definitely. course, we look forward to seeing more of your work. We look forward to yeah. seeing more of, of yeah. your work and more of your projects. Um, I love the fact that you know you, these these brands are approaching you to do stuff with them because obviously yeah. that just means that you know your name is officially solidified in history, Thank which is a big thing, Thank which is a tools. pretty big thing. So well you done, <laughs> well done, well done for that. Um, I'm sure you've got lots of people, lots of fans that have yeah. never met you but follow your work, follow you religiously. Um, I saw it on your page that when people find out you're in Nigeria, they're like, "Are you doing a meet and greet? How can we meet you? How can yes. we see you?" So yes. Do you want to say anything to them? Are you doing a meet and greet? Yes, I'm doing a meet and greet later today at 7. It's going to be at Bogoberry and I'm just going to be hanging out with people. I'm going to be, I, might, I, might, I, might, I might sing with the tools if she wants to sing. You you need know, to she's, really, she's really good. See yeah. I would like to take her. i just like us to jam out like this. That would be totally dope. Um, I don't want people to throw rocks at me. <laughs> no, nobody's going to throw rocks at you tools. You're just going to be jamming out. Yeah, so I'm meeting people there. I'll be painting a few faces. I mean, just... Just hanging out and getting to ask me some few questions, and also yeah. I'll be signing some 
Photograph, so yeah. Good. So that's happening yeah. at Boga Brewery Boga later Brewery today. today. Yeah, okay. later today, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Um, Osi has been waiting, waiting for you to paint his face. I'm like, you know, he's, you know, you know, he's quite dark. So you need something that's gonna really stand out. No, he's he's already like. I, I can I can see it already on his like his body like, the vibe is strong. I can see like the vibe of like oh yeah, you know, right on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be strong. It's, 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 yeah. We're gonna do it. Is that the vibe you're getting? I'm getting a completely different vibe. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. You sure? Full body. Full body. Ah, yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. That was. I was gonna ask you that because yeah. um, a lot of the times you're mm -hmm. you're painting on completely nude, mainly women. Yeah. You know, it's it's called. Well, it's, it's like the sacred out of the ori. Like I told you, they explained it like taking patterns, inspirations from different like Yoruba mytholo um, mythological figures, and then transporting people that I paint into that you know um, sphere. And uh, every time I do that, like for body of women, for example, I'm trying to edify. Maybe I'm taking you from who you are, I'm turning you to Oya, for example. Yeah. Pretty much transporting you back into that time, putting you back in the present. So is it sense. is it you know your requirement or their requirement? A lot of times it's, 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 it's a project, like I, 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 I see someone or I like a model or I like the music and I want to work with them because they give me something they're so interesting to work with. Mm. We, we kind of talk about it, we have meetings as far before we even go into it. Because the thing is, people look at it, it looks beautiful. Man, it takes like seven to eight hours to do oh, like wow. a full body. Oh, wow. That's and after that, we have to take photos. We yeah, have to take the photos yeah. of the deposits, whatever we had in mind in the deck from the story, um, sketchbook or storybook, whatever we want to do. Okay. So it's it's a lot of work. The pictures yeah. at the end in the memories, because eventually they wash it off. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's, that's the beauty about it. Like, it's like a process seven, and you hours. get there. That's, that's, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah. Um, so, you've got to be honest, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been attracted to anybody that you've, like, you know, painted their body? <laughs> Have you ever kind of, I don't know, maybe you're just like, oh, hello. <laughs> I don't, well, I mean, I don't, I don't think so, because I'm trying to think back now and see this. I, I, I get, I could get attracted to someone and not because I want to paint them or because I painted them. No, no, like, in, like, somebody that you're painting, did no. you, have you ever, like, no. kind of just... Like you when know. you when you get there, when you're in that zone, it's it's like I'm painting on canvas. Like I'm not I'm thinking about the photos, I'm thinking about the end. A lot Wait, of times I'm even tired. if the, even if the person had like a banging body. No. No the, it, it won't move see, you. It's it's not a moving. You, you you don't seem to understand. That person is not nude anymore. Do you do you get it? Like the I think I, I think you just haven't met the person yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but <laughs> let, let me be honest with you. Let me be honest with you. When I'm done, I want to sleep. I'm tired. Like really? eight hours, nine hours, sometimes ten, straight, without doing anything. All I'm doing is my eyes, my hands. I'm getting all these details. And when you look at details, they're not like, I'm not using stencils or anything. Like yeah, I'm right yeah. there and then, and I, I have to concentrate. And it's all like freehand, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like I have an idea and I'm like, okay, this must not go wrong. And I'm like looking at it, I'm looking at Like I'm looking at your face now. I can see multiple patterns. I can see like, this goes here, this is going to go there, that's going to go there. So if I do this and it doesn't go there, I'm thinking about 20 other possibilities of where those lines could go. Do you know, right Okay, so spot. yes, you're painting my face. Please, if you want to paint my face, please don't paint over my eyebrows. It took me a while to draw them today. Don't so. worry, don't worry. Okay. You're good. Good, you're good, good, good. I will, I will paint over your All eyebrows. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. This has been so much fun. This has been so much fun. Thank, thank you very you much so for coming on my show. Me. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor. Thank you so much for doing this for me. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for all you do. I've followed <laughs> you for a little while now. And yeah. um, I think, did I send you a message first or did you send me a message? You said... Yeah, and I was still thinking he's yeah. never gonna respond. And then, <laughs> yeah, you like, said that you, you didn't expect me to respond. Like, yeah. who doesn't know tools? Like, why are you still doing this? I'm like, we all know like, tools. Oh, Come on, man. I was just excited, you know, to be like, you know, it's a feeling. It's different when you, you know, in, in the US, but back home when people yeah. are like, you know, a hype about you, that that is something different. It touches me in a very different way mm -hmm. because it's something that you know, eventually, because we all we all from here and we all want to do something that. Stands what, out. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's, it's a different feeling. Like here, people, everybody I stopped there, I want to talk to them because they tell me, "Oh, I follow you. I'm a big fan." Of, that that hits me because this is different because they know they know what it is. They understand. Yeah. They yeah. understand me more. Yeah. You know, they know where I'm from. They know the struggle. You know, yeah. it's different when you're elsewhere. People don't really understand when you see you Nigerian. They just say, "Guys, yeah, just a place." You're African, yeah. Yeah, you know, just <laughs> they think, "Oh, you're from the motherland," and I'm like, 
motherland, child. I'm like, yo, you're from Africa. People call me like, Lalu, how's Africa? I'm like, yo, like, I'm not in Africa, I'm in Nigeria. Like, yeah, boy, see, I'm like, yo, you know, my ticket said Nigeria, I didn't say Africa, you know? But a lot of people don't know that, you know? So, yeah, it's very different here. It's very, very different. I'm but just excited to go home. Good, good. All right, so I need to, I need to let you go because there are lots of people waiting for you. Um, yeah, to, to you know, paint that, the hands, faces, and everything. Um, but seriously, well done on what you're doing. Um, I think we are. This is a very, very special time for um, Nigeria and Africa as a whole because yeah. lots of people all over the world are hungry to you know experience our experience culture. Our culture yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think I think what you've done is absolutely magnificent, and um, we hope to see way way more from you over the next few years thank you um so i will definitely do my best to come to new york to see your gallery this year tools <laughs> nyc they were going to call you tools nyc yeah. like yeah and, and i'm gonna i'm gonna say somebody so i can buy something from you oh yeah. man yeah that'd um, be very special D, are you taking that no, yeah yeah got that. <laughs> but, but let me just let me just speak to my bank, we'll take a deposit my bank manager take deposit now, yeah. deposit. yes 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 okay all right don't pay the check in till after in till dollars, february like, <laughs> dollars, uh, anyways we'll, 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 we'll make yeah. an exception yeah, okay. <laughs> this is uh trouble once again laulu nyc featuring sound sultan mr easy and nanit b cool um in just a few moments we have got hang time to make sure you stick around for that